Hi, welcome to Actual LOL, I'm John Perkis. Today I'm going to show you my entire board game collection. There's 323 games in these shelves. I last did a video like this about three years ago, and I think I had probably a hundred more games at the time, so things have changed a lot since then. And if you see any games that you want to know more about, I've actually done videos on 200 or more of these games, so I've put links to where you can find, you can click through and watch my previous video on that game and learn more about it. Unfortunately, a hundred games never got covered, but maybe I'll get to them at some point. Right, let's get into it. Serena's with me behind the camera. Hello. Say hello, thank you. Hi. Um, and uh, we're going to go through it. Right, so first things first. I've got an IKEA Bester bookcase. What I love about the Bester range over Calyx is that you can customize the shelf heights. And how many, I mean, I, how many hours have I spent in here just like moving things around to try and get that extra inch of space? Right, let's start up here. So this- We're going up. Everything's color coded, kind of. You know, I, I want it to look vaguely good. So these are most of the black games. And there's some thematic stuff here. So Sons of Anarchy and Spartacus, those are big negotiation games that I just love, but don't get to play that much. They're mean. It's very hard to find friends that want to play that kind of game, but I absolutely love them. King's Dilemma is a beast. And we had, we had to obviously put this one on hold from lockdown. Uh, Serena was playing this one and, uh, well, a bunch of friends and then one of them moved out of London. Ah, oh, come on, Paul. How could you? Um, but what I love about um, King's Dilemma being there is it's right next to Railroad Inc., which uh, you wouldn't appreciate is from the same two designers, Yalmar and Lorenzo. And uh, I just, they couldn't be kind of more different games. One's like a little roll and write game, great travel game. And this is this awesome legacy storytelling negotiation game. And I love them both. They're a great like pairing. Um, Dark Moon, another great thematic game. Chronicles of Crime, we've been playing loads over lockdown because it's just great to play two player and we had loads to catch up on. Let's go right to the top is Clank Legacy. Um, that's just gathering dust because again, can't meet up with my friends, so that's not getting played. And then we've got Clask. So these are just the boxes that won't fit on the shelf. Um, and then down here, we, we're getting to like lighter games. This is kind of the perfect party game shelf. Code names came up with a definitive box size and then everyone copied them. And so just one is great, Decrypto. Master Word is a new one that I'm liking, and you can play it really nicely over webcam as well. So it's actually a party game that you can still have fun with. Uh, Dead Last, I haven't played that in a long time. It needs a big group. It's really only there. It, it's not on a par with the rest of them. It's just there because it's slightly thicker and it filled the space perfectly. So some, it's not always a color thing. Sometimes it's just a, a space thing. Um, and then above it, you've got all the cockroach poker games. So uh, that's like the classic. And then these are all kind of great drinking games. Dodolido is really good. Tarantula Tango. It um, looks like a lot of those games are from different countries as well, I can see. Yeah, languages. yeah this one is an absolute gem. Efka from No Pun Included told me I needed to get this at an Essen like two or three years ago. It's called I My Favorite Things. And it is absolutely one of my favorite party games. Uh, it, where you have to, you have to remember things about your friends and use that information to win a game. And it's brilliant. And I just wish that they would release a proper version so people could actually buy it. Um, so yeah, that that is, I would never get rid of that one. That is perfect. And then this is another kind of cool niche one. Someone has died, just like an um, improv game where someone's died and you're at their will will reading. Definitely some like quirky games here. Lifeboat is an older one that almost kind of you feel like shouldn't work as a game. It's where you're on a boat and you're throwing people overboard but you're in love with one person and you hate another person and it 
yeah, it creates enough laughter that it, it stays. Micro Macro is uh, a, a new addition. I feel like that's, that's the new favorite, isn't it? Yeah, this is a new favorite. It's on here temporarily, really. It's filling a space because ultimately we'll finish it and then it will be gone. And I'm, I definitely as a reviewer, there's a real appeal to just being able to play a game and get rid of it and then it makes space for something new. So I appreciate that. But, but just loving this one, it's, it's Where's Wally turned into a board game. I'm gonna be talking about it again. I really like, this is a, another tricky one to get hold of. I got this one on eBay. It's made in the 90s and it's basically Balderdash, but with the first lines of famous novels. And of course, nobody knows the first line to something, some book. I can't find an example. It requires quite a lot of creativity. You're basically having to write like a famous author. But it's hilarious when one of your friends tricks you into thinking that what they wrote is actually the real first line of the book. Um, yeah, really, really like that one. This is a nice little line of games from uh, board game tables. On tour is probably my favorite great roll and write game, but I just, I like, I like it when the boxes line up and they have the same size. Let's go down a bit further. Pandemic, one of my favorite games of all time. And then we've got in these boxes, in the lab expansion, on the brink expansion. I actually, <laughs> I, used to, I used to condense boxes down loads. So in our old flat, we had way less space and one bookcase. And so what I would do was I would like take components out of games and put them in other boxes. They weren't even the same game. And then I would uh, give those boxes to my mum to put in her loft at her house because she has a bigger house. And then what happened was we moved here and I took some of those boxes back, except I left a whole bunch of them on the train. <laughs> and so they were just lost forever. Just. Uh, probably about 15 different game boxes. And I also have Fall of Rome, but I lent that to my friend Pankaj in December 2019. And then, you know, like fine, he, you know, he was still playing it when it came to March 2020. And then I haven't seen him since. Uh, La Cosa Nostra is, um, this actually is from the same designer as Micro Macro, Crime City. Completely different type of game. Uh, this is a negotiation game where you're playing like mafia people and it's it's cutthroat. It's really quite mean, uh, but it's really fun. And it's it was, I was always impressed um, to find such an interesting thematic interactive game come out of Germany because they're sort of known for more of the dry Euro thing. Um, and yeah, it's great. So completely under, under the radar, that game. It feels like if a box is black, then it's a bit beefier. It's a bit more thematic. That's what I'm noticing. So Champions of Midgard and Clank, and then you've got Game of Thrones and Battlestar Galactica. Literally in those two games combined is what, like 12 hours of gameplay. You would never play them on the same weekend because you'd be like exhausted uh, emotionally. But I love, I love those two games. Game of Thrones especially was one that kind of got me into gaming after a few others. It was the first one where I was like really fell in love and the big, huge experience. And I don't have loads of huge games, but that's because for a game to win you over for that amount of time, it's got to be amazing, right? And so many games I've tried just don't cut the mustard compared to like these two. Do you think that Game of Thrones is one of the games that have got a lot of your other friends into gaming? Yeah, I think because it was it was like this perfect storm of everyone was watching the TV show and my friends were still in London at the time and we would have like a big game day and it and you really got into it and then that kind of opened up their eyes to other stuff. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, letters from Whitechapel, nothing personal as well. So there's really beefy, like these are some of my favorites. Um, and then if we go down even further, this war of mine is a brilliant cooperative game that's really epic as well. Um, and then some like the games that maybe I don't play that much, Mission Red Planet, at times has been a bit like, well, I keep this game and I play it and I'm like, yeah, I should keep this game, but it doesn't kind of fit a lot of my style usually. 
Um, but games like that can be interesting. Age of Dirt is a, a really cool one um, where you like have a cube tower. So you send, it's in the Stone Age and you send people out to go hunting and you put them in a cube tower and if they come out the bottom, they were successful. And if they don't, well, they'll come out later and you'll end up, they'll end up getting you, like instead of going hunting and getting you pelts, they end up like picking you leaves instead or something. So um, that one's just kind of got a real like humor to it. It's, it's different. And I think one of the things that you'll find with my collection is that I tend to keep a lot of games that do something very different. But when you've like played this many games and you've reviewed so many, the ones that often stand out are the ones that are just really interesting in a different way. Um, I try not to have too much of the same type of thing, but I'm sure there's loads of examples to prove that wrong. So Captain Sonar would be another one that's just completely different to anything else I own. And, and that's why it's, it's on the shelf, even though I kind of never play it. So when you think about this whole um, this whole section of the bookcase, yeah, do you have do you have one that you think is the most original idea? Oh wow! Um, I think picking one is kind of crazy. I think, but two rooms in a boom is just completely unique. Uh, micro macro is very unique, and yeah, Captain Sonar. I would say those. There's not many games out there like that, so. So here we've got the classic Cosmos two-player shelf. This is the perfect size for the two-player game. So actually not that many from Cosmos, uh, but Patchwork, um, Watergate, Thunder and Lightning, Paris, uh, La Cité de la Lumière, Spirits of the Wild, and Lost Cities, all brilliant two-player games. Here's kind of a collection of party games actually, or kind of lighter stuff that's just in bigger boxes. So Wavelength is the one that we did a couple of live shows around is brilliant. Um, Ultimate Showdown is kind of a niche one where you are pitting like famous people against each other and then kind of having an argument about who's better and then voting on who you think will win. But actually in this box, because this box is ridiculous for this game, I've got other party games that came in two bigger boxes. So this is like my, kind of like my collection of old eBay games. So I've got Compatibility, which is a classic from what, like the 90s or um, where you're trying to kind of think in sync with your partner. It's a bit of a hangover from when I used to put games in the same boxes and I, the Compatibility box, I got it on eBay and it was just like falling apart. Funny friends up here, I worked quite hard to get this game. This is from Freedom and Freezer, but it's it it's out of print for a very long time. And I hunted down people on Board Game Geek. They weren't even selling it. I would like contact people that were offering it up for trade, and I'd be like, "Can I just buy it off you?" And I eventually got myself a copy. Why did you want it so badly? Because it was around this time when I was really into the theme of games. This was before I was making videos and you would just hear about a game in like one Dice Tower video and think, oh my God, that sounds amazing. And this one is about just living your life and making friends with people, but you're trying to balance things like how much you smoke, how much you do drugs. It's got like a real adult mature uh, theme, but with like a real comical edge. And so like how unhappy you are and um, it just tells really interesting stories. Up here, we have got Thief. Uh, France 1429, and this is kind of like Game of Thrones. It's another big alliance forming game where you're at war with each other. And it's such a great idea, but it doesn't fully work. And it, this one is kind of, I'm waiting. I've played it maybe six times and some of them have been great. And then some of them have been really bad. And I'm still trying to work out, you kind of need to enjoy it with people that already know it. And I don't think I've ever really played it with the same people again. So I, I have so much faith in that game, uh, but it's definitely flawed and you kind of got to go along with it because it tells a great story. It's very much, 
it's almost more thematic than the Game of Thrones game. So now we've got the, the Sherlock Holmes, the definitive Sherlock Holmes consulting detective range. We haven't ever quite finished one of these boxes. This is like the first one because I almost don't want to finish them because then I'll feel like, oh, I should get rid of it because it's not the kind of game you can play again. But I just love the way they look. I love the whole aesthetic. They're so nicely crafted. And I'm not really a game collector. I really love getting rid of games when I've decided I don't want them anymore, especially because I just always run out of space. This is like the only game that I get a bit collectory about where I just, I feel really proud to like have them on the shelf. Um, and it would be even better if they were upright because then they kind of look like a book and they have, you know, it comes out and it's all great, but that takes up too much space, so that can't happen. Let's go down to this shelf. Bit of a ragtag shelf. I tried to do a bit of a gray theme and then it kind of goes into brownie oranges, but Beige. <laughs> sort of works. Um, the, definitely some niche games here. Harb and Goot is a game that's completely out of print and I had to hunt down for a while. Really interesting game. This absolutely should come back. This is, people would love this game. It's a stock training game but you are sharing cards with the players to your left and your right. So you can kind of see how they're gonna influence the market. And it's got this cool mechanism where you have to give to charity. And if you don't give the most, if you give the least to charity at the end of the game, you lose. And just some really cool thematic ideas to what is like a really simple game. Really like that one. Also some good puzzle games here. Sagrada, Overbooked, Parks, some good like light to midweight games, kind of my vibe there. All of those three are maybe not as interactive as I would like with other players. So they're definitely not like in my top 50 maybe, but definitely deserve a place in the collection. And then this next shelf, this is the Carcassonne size kind of. There's actually not that many games I own that are like Carcassonne. Um, but Isle of Sky is, this is one of those games where, God, it, it just, it sounds so dull. Maybe it's because it's set in Britain and that's not that exciting to me. Um, I don't know. I mean, we do love Scotland, but there's just something about this game that seems so unappealing. So it took me maybe two or three years to ever try it. And I really like it. Um, it's, got, it's got a really cool auction mechanism. Hunter, Viva El Presidente is another quirky one. This actually comes with a pair of sunglasses. Uh, that you give to the player that is like the, the president at the time. And you, but you're trying to attack the president or defend the president. There's like alliances. It's quite a light game, um, but it, yeah, it just works. And it's, the game, it's another one that's probably out of print. Nobody else cares about it, but I really like it. Do you think any of these games are the ones that you'll be most desperate to play with your friends after lockdown <laughs> ends? Um, I think I'll be getting Half Truth out because it's new. Probably not going to play some of the others for a while. That's the trouble with having like three. You don't need 300 games. I I might not play these for the whole of the next year, but um, party games more likely to. Nuns on the Run is another. I feel like I'm picking out all the quirky ones. This is a hidden movement game. And I had loads of hidden movement games at one point. And now I think I just have Letters from Whitechapel and this. And it's because in this one, five people get to hide and one person's hunting and that's just really cool and it and it works like it's a bit fiddly but it works and it's fun and really that's all it's about all right let's go down do we get to see what's in this drawer uh, no you don't <laughs> <laughs> it's basically empty because it doesn't have the camera in it oh right that's why you stole the camera uh so dead of winter is one of my favorites this is we're getting, when we get to this size of box, the games get a bit bigger, I suppose. Um, New Angeles is, this is such a underrated game, but I feel like there's a huge problem in the board game community, which is that nobody likes negotiation games as much as I do. And in, I think it's probably one of the least popular genres. And I don't understand because they're so much fun. They're so interactive, they're so social and they create such interesting moments. And New Angeles is such a cool example of one that just 
got no love and it's you know destined it will never you'll probably um you know it's never going to come back in print and uh i think it's great and i did a whole review of it and you should absolutely watch it um yeah uh, some really good ones here actually k2 i've talked a lot about pursuit of happiness is like the thematic oh i can't get it out that's crazy um this is another game about living your life. So just like Funny Friends, and I've actually got CV as well. I really like this as a theme. This one probably does it the best. And every time you do it, you tell a new life story. And I just, that's so appealing to me. Oh, and here's another one actually that kind of fits the same style. I would say there's four games that I love and they're all kind of similar. This one is about creating a family tree. So you're marrying off your family in like the French aristocracy and they're having kids and you're just trying to grow it and marry them off to different friends and it's it's a Euro game with good strategic ideas but with such a cool theme that just really pulls me in and makes it way more interesting than just kind of counting points and stuff. Couple here that maybe might not stay around forever, Dice Town and Speculation. Um, they're not, they've got their reasons to be there. Like every time I've played them to consider getting rid of them, I'm like, no, it kind of fills a hole that nothing else does. But you kind of feel like if something else was to come along, maybe they'd be replaced. Merchants and Marauders is the definitive epic pirate game. I would love to play that again after lockdown. Like have a day of it that would be awesome but um uh that that's the kind of game that you keep and you play like once every two years but when you do you're like yeah that's why i keep it um camel up and survive tobago great family game so yeah it's quite a good little shelf the browns and you find this like surprising amount of yellow um and brown board game boxes not the color i would pick but sure we've just noticed that this bookcase leans forward massively compared to the other one. I don't think it's attached to the wall, so hopefully it's never gonna collapse. It's gonna fall on you. I suppose it would be a good way to die. So we're getting into the really small games now. There's a whole run of them here. Um, these There's are... a lot of games packed into a very small space here. I right, because I think at the start I said I've got 320 something games, but so many of them are this size. That's how I'm able to have 300 games in not the biggest of spaces because I don't have loads and loads of the bigger boxes. The bigger boxes have to really work for their space. Up here, this shelf, it's, it doesn't feel like this, this feels amazing. Like there's a real collection of greatness. This, I don't know, it feels a bit higgledy piggledy. Um, maybe it just doesn't match up color wise. Do you have mixed feelings about the keeping them, do you mean? Yeah. Or is it just, you, you just don't like the, the layout of the shelf or do you mean? It's, it's kind of both. Like definitely I'm not sure. I just don't look at this and see amazing games that I love. I, I do really like them. Um, and there's also, yeah, it just doesn't look that nice either. But like Muse and Mysterium Park are very similar. They're both games that use Dixit cards. Um, on, on Irem and Arion are both from the same range. Cartographers is like good, but is it the best roll and write I have or flip and write? This one's kind of a new one that I quite enjoyed. This is a modern art card game, very simple, but it has that Reiner Knizia thing and I just love his stuff. He's definitely the designer who I have the most games by. It goes Reiner Knizia and then Tim Fowers maybe? And, oh, Matt Leacock would be there. And then basically pretty much every other game is from a different designer, usually. There's a few like uh, Lorenzo and Yalmar that I said earlier. There's there's definitely a few that I have like twos or threes from, but most of these games are just from a designer and then I don't like any of their other games or they didn't do any other games. Are there any um, games or any designers that people would expect you to have that you don't have? Ooh. Any famous designers that you're I'm not, not sure. I used to have... I was gonna say I don't have any Uwe Rosenberg games, but that's not true at all because he made, um, like he's got the Tetris games, so that's not true. I don't think I own any Stefan Feld games, but that's maybe not a big surprise given my tastes. 
Um, there's probably some like Ameritrash designers that I don't have any games by. Um, yeah, there's going to be loads actually that you'd be surprised. They just, it, like most of them, they would be designers where I've played them and they're like a seven out of 10. And it's like, yeah, that's good, but it's not, it's not for me. Like, or it's just not, it's not good enough. And that's kind of where I'm at with a lot of designers. Um, yeah, some really quirky like party games here. This is very niche. We need to talk and brick party. Uh, let's go up to some bigger games. Ticket to Rides, obviously classic. Got like one or two expansions. I have expansions for like lighter games. And when like a neighbor wants to borrow it and then I've got to take all the expansions out of the box because they're playing it for the first time and it's going to confuse them. And I actually did confuse them by like accidentally leaving in like some extra card or something. And then like looking in the rules, trying to find out what it is. So I, I really regret getting rid of the boxes for the expansion to like Ticket to Ride and Carcassonne because every time I lend it out, I have to like take them out. Um, Hollywood Golden Age is, a, is one of my favorite Reiner Knizia games to come back to him. And wow, like what a look to it. It's about creating movies, which is a theme that I love. And it's got all like artwork that is based on the kind of famous actresses and actors from that time, like Audrey Hepburn. It's really nice. It's a beautiful looking box. And then up here, Western Legends has been a real favorite lately. This is one of the few big games that I got to play in that kind of lockdown window where we were allowed to see people and had an absolute blast with it. Detective City of Angels up here is one that I've been waiting to play for a long time. I've only just got it, uh, so I haven't played it. It's not officially in my collection, but it's big, so it has to go up there. Yeah, yeah. Risk Legacy is brilliant, but when am I, I just, the group, we last played that like maybe four years ago at this point, and then everyone like had kids. I remember being, you know, fairly happy with the arrangement of this, of this section. Um, some lighter stuff, Sushi Roll and Sheriff of Nottingham, great gateway games. Catch the Moon is such a brilliant dexterity game with all these wooden ladders in that you're stacking up. Brilliant, totally underrated that one. You're quite into dexterity games, aren't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. I've got more than I, I might think. It's easy for someone to do something quite different with a dexterity game. When it offers a, a completely different experience, that's when it stays in the collection. Um, so Scrawl and Wits and Wages, great party games. Spaghetti, actually, another dexterity game um, that does something different where you're pulling out shoelaces and trying not to let the meatballs fall off. Um, yeah. Blue Lagoon, great Reiner Knizia game. This is a bit of a mishmash shelf. Definitely not uh, fond of the way this looks. Uh, there's a couple of kids games here that work for adults really well, so I, that's why I've got those. Um, Shobu and Blitzkrieg, some good two-player games. Ticket to Ride London, I've just kind of got because it's London and that's where I live. We've got the yellow games, so that's basically queen games. Um, Show Manager is one that I, I like to talk about. I don't know if it's in print or not, but it has some really bad artwork, but it's such a cool gateway game um, with a really cool theme because you're trying to run musicals and I think that theme would be really appealing. If this game was released today, I swear it would do really well with good artwork, right? And it's from a good designer like Dirk Hen, he's done Shogun and other games. So I'm big fan of like hyping that one up. Anytime anyone asks like about good under the radar games on, on like Reddit or something, that's the one I always mention. MS Battery is kind of a niche one that um, this has a 3D cruise ship that you build and it's, I really love the theme of it because it's a murder mystery on like a cruise liner and the 3D thing, I don't always get taken in by stuff like that but this one, I think mostly I've kept though, um, just because it's a deduction game that I quite like, it's quite simple and a lot of the ones I've played go on too long so it kind of feels like Cluedo but without being overwrought and or really hard. 878 Vikings. It's kind of a different type of game for me. This is a war game. So it's two versus two. 
and you're trying to fight off the Viking hordes. I used to have 1812 Invasion of Canada, but they're kind of the same system and I just slightly prefer the theme of this one, so I kept this one. So again, it's like, that's, that kind of satisfies my war game. I used to have Mem Memoir 44. I didn't play it lots and I just found it a bit too luck heavy. I like to have kind of one of most things and that's my one war game and I really enjoy it when I play it, which isn't very often and that's kind of why it sticks around because it's just my one war game. And then right down at the bottom, there's a few interesting ones here. Divinity Derby is actually the same designer, kind of the same idea as Harb and Gut that I was talking about, but it's a race and it works really well. And I don't know why it never gets talked about. And Uluru is one that I picked up on a trade. It's kind of a real time puzzle thing. It really fries your mind, um, but it works really nicely. I've, tr I've tried other games like this from the same designer and this is the one that I like the best. So the final bookcase isn't actually all games that I consider part of my collection. Some of them are games that I've got in for review and probably not gonna end up keeping them or I haven't played them yet so I don't know if I like them. This is kind of the in and out shelf, isn't it? Yeah, so I, it tends to be, it's kind of in the corner. When the door opens, it gets hidden behind the door. And so this is always like the messiest section. And some of the shelves are pristine and they are games that I'm keeping forever. And some are just kind of, yeah, like the in and out. So we've got like the smaller games in and out and then the bigger games further down. But if we start at the top, um, I've got the two XXL versions of Codenames and Codenames Duet. Uh, I kind of got them for a video idea that I never went through with, but um, I'm, so I'm not sure if they'll stick around forever. What was the idea? Well, it was to play Codenames live with like a guest and kind of interview them at the same time. And yeah, I, well then lockdown happened. I'm not sure I'll ever get back to it, but we'll see. Um, Lords of Vegas, brilliant negotiation game about setting up casinos. I, I got to play that one at the start of 2020 and I just loved it. It was such a great time. It's such a memorable experience. These two games actually, the reason they're here is because if you turn the box on their side, it just all falls out. And tags especially, like it has this insert. So that's why it's there, collecting dust. Um, and then we come down. These are definitely like the new arrivals. So there's no color coding or anything. These are the games that came in last year that I'm probably gonna keep, but I might not necessarily, I've sort of got to decide. Some of the games I've played maybe only with like two players and I wanna play them with more players and, and really put them through their paces. Iwari is a cool one that I'm gonna be covering at some point. That's an, I've not heard that. Uh that name before do you know <laughs> yeah i have no idea i think it's just a made-up land but it's got such nice artwork this is based on a game that's from like 1999 so it's like a, a old school german classic redone and it's just nice and simple uh, so i'll be talking about that another interesting one from last year that won't have got talked about much is uh die Sehe von santiba it's from zock who will, will always make kind of interesting games and the designer is Leo Colavini. Um, I don't know if I have loads of games f by him, but he's like a real kind of classic old school designer that makes interesting stuff. And it's a game of trying to read people's minds and guess what they're gonna do. Very simple. I just, the one thing I hate about this game is how big the box is. You just can't even believe how little is in this. Ah! Like that's it. That's all's in there. And uh, it's one of my least favorite things is um, games taking up too much space. It doesn't fit with your nice neat system, does it? That's it doesn't the... fit the system, you're right, Serena. No problem. Um, it's so... funny to me because um, you're quite particular about your games being neat and tidy. And um, perhaps in real life, you're not that fast about, about, anything, about else. anything else being tidy. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> Just the definitely... precious games. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, there's definitely a bit of that going on. And alongside that one, this is one of the most recent games that I've fallen in love with. It's an older game from Zoc, same publisher, and it's a push your luck game. And it just works brilliantly. You're betting on how well you're gonna do. 
and there's so much incentive to take risks. I talked about it more in my newsletter, my Patreon newsletter, if you want to um, have a look. But uh, I, I can't wait to play it. I actually haven't played it, this copy. I got it in a trade. Um, I played it online. It's on Tabletop Simulator. So I imagine it's going to be even better in real life. This is like the pouch section. Pouches, they're nice to look at. You've got your happy salmon or whatever, but they're annoying to store. I'm not a fan. Um, I've got the... Uh, these are like the Paco games. So the ones that are like uh, little chewing gum sized travel We've games. We've spent many picnics and like holidays and that sort of thing playing with those, haven't we? Yeah, we, I, I got all of them at one point and then forced Serena to like play every single one. So every holiday and they're, they're good, like they're good, but probably there's not a single game in here that is better than any other game I own. But you keep them because they're tiny and they're kind of cute. I've got Hive Pocket back there. Ugh. And then this game is uh, Bananagrams. And this is a game that I'm always trying to persuade Serena, like, can we just get rid of it? But I suppose there's some kind of... Bit of nostalgia Bit there. of nostalgia. I still remember we were on, like, I think our first ever holiday together. I think we bought it at the airport. Yeah, yeah. so this would be, like, over 10 years ago. And we were in Smith's and we, were, we, didn't, we didn't play games at the time. But it was like, oh, it's in a banana. That's how they get you, right? <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> so, yeah, we've had it ever since. Um, the Fuzzies is a new... Ooh. The Fuzzies is a new one uh, from the people that made Wavelength. I've got to show you this. This is ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. Um, so you've got... Oh, am I going to be able it's to... It's going to go everywhere. Am I going to be able to pull Are it you off? feeling brave? Ah, oh my cards. god. Ignore that. Ignore that. And now he's making a mess. Ta-da! Look at that. <laughs> so this is another dexterity game. Uh, it's basically like Jenga, where you... Oh, man. <laughs> well, obviously... <laughs> well, now they're... Uh... Well, they're on the floor now. <laughs> You're just going to have to leave them there and <laughs> keep going like yeah, a Yeah, I, I really are. am. But imagine, <laughs> if you will, a stack of that that was on an actual table and you have to take these fuzzy balls and the, the thing is they stick so brilliantly until together. You don't want until, them yeah, to... until you tip them off. <laughs> I could on have floor. seen that coming a mile off. And so you take you take one off and like put it back at the top and they and they stick together and it's just it's really cute. This is not a game. This is a board game accessory. Uh, these are the poker chips, the iron clays that come with brass, uh, like brass, but I don't own brass, but these are nice poker chips. Not the best shelf, definitely not the best shelf. And then this is like, this is the in shelf for lighter games. So I might have played them once, but... By actually, in you mean they kind of, they arrived recently? Yeah, these are new arrivals. So these are not considered part of the collection. Please avert your eyes from these. Um, but this is, this, it's very hard to determine the difference, but this is part of the collection. So we've got more great card games, Arboretum, brilliant, Avenue is brilliant, um, Hanamakoji is brilliant, Second Chance is brilliant. Um, yeah, these are all great. Lovely bit of colour combination on yeah, my Yeah, big, big well. fan of that. And then we've got the real awesome, I love the, the tiny German card size from Amigo and Schmidt and what's the other company that do it? NSV. Yeah, I'm so pleased with this section. This is great. The only bad thing is that, you know, if I accidentally do that, the shelf goes back way too far and now how am I ever going to get that back? I need some kind of like system for smaller games because that is a nightmare of my existence. What's your top game on, on that section? Well, I mean, I'm always going to talk about Quinto it's just boring because I, I've talked about these games so much. Quinto and the Mind and No Thanks. These are like classics bonanza. But if I was to pick just a slightly off the wall one, I think Land Unter is really great. It's a bit like Six Nymphed. Um, and Skull King is a great trick taking game. Yeah, though, I mean, if you want like a really niche one, Three Sinned Einzu Veal. Again, a bit like Six Nymphed, but just different enough that I liked it and um, decided to keep it. And now I can't get it back in and it's just gonna have to go on the floor with everything else. When I was going through, I was um, 
to make this video, I've put all the links to all the videos where I cover these games. And it's really interesting to see when I talked about certain games and which games from old videos, you know, have long since left my collection or whatever. And there's one particular video from an Essen about three years ago where I reviewed, I think, like six games in one video. And I still have like all of those games. And that's such a rare thing. You know, most of those videos that I used to make back in the day where I'd cover like six games, I don't have a single one of those games anymore. Um, and yeah, so I think there's a video where Capital and Avenue and Spaghetti and Sixes and When I Dream, um, yeah, and there's still, still... The golden age of board games that year. That was year. like a really good Essen year for light and games some, and party games. Kings and Assassins, um, I haven't had a chance to talk about yet. This is an older game. It's a two-player game. And it's just really thematic for the simplicity of it. You are trying to, one player plays as a king and they're trying to get them to safety. And the other player controls all the villagers and some of them are their secret assassins. It feels very much like Assassin's Creed, the board game. And yeah, it's, it's a cool little game. So down here, this is another kind of bit of a messy shelf. Uh, you've got the new Burgle Brothers 2. Um, which is, you know, comes in a bit of a bigger box, but still keeping it pretty beautiful, trim. Beautiful design, though. Yeah. Um, and don't get got. This is definitely a fave because this is the only box in my collection that has actual lol written on it. So big fan of that. And this is just such a fun game where you're like, I play this on my stag do, and you're 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 playing it throughout the day, and you're trying to prank each other effectively. And you can play with loads of people. Yeah, at you the same can play time. with like eight people or you could buy another copy and play with 16 people. Uh, some Sushi Go Party, great, you know, uh, Forbidden Island. And then actually this is just another shelf. This is things that might be going or they might be staying. That is all of my games. If you saw any that you want to know more about, then I've put links to 200 of them where you can go back to my old videos and hopefully learn a bit more than I could give you here. Um, if you've got any questions about the collection, then I suppose leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe on YouTube or support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.